Hello everyone, and welcome back to Hearthstone, brought to you by Sleep by the Hearth. As you can tell in the first couple of videos, I did, uh, or did I do an intro like that, because at the time I did not think of the name for the channel, but there we have it. Today, we're actually going to be doing a little bit of deck crafting for the quest. Now, I already have two shaman decks that a friend of mine helped build for me. I'm not much of a deck crafter myself, but today I'm actually going to give it a shot. And the quest today is also shaman, and it's actually some of the most fun that I've had playing, so we are going to give that a try once more. Now I don't have all the cards from Goblins vs. Gnomes or the initial set, so if I hear, or if you hear, a card that you would not have chosen, um, most likely, I do not have the card. And if you are watching this before you fall asleep, you'll also be able to see what cards I have. But for those listening, I'm not going to list off every single card. It might get a little tiresome. I know that's a bit of the point of this, but let's just get on with the show. Okay, so I'm going to try something a bit more focused around totems just because I've never tried it before. And also the first card that I'm looking at is Totemic Might. So I might choose to change my mind, but till then, uh, actually, you know what? I already have. My first initial thought was doing something along the lines of uh, Murlocs. Because I've heard talk of Murloc Shamans before being a pretty decent combination. And although I don't have the legendary, which was um, Neptilon, I am going to give it a shot anyway. So, uh, looking at the first page of Shaman, I don't really see a whole lot, but I am going to add a Forked Lightning, which deals 2 damage to 2 random enemy minions at the cost of Overload 2, and it's a 1 mana cost initially. I'm going to try that out. We're going to also put in an Earth Shock, which will silence a minion and deal one damage to it. I'm going to put two of those in. And we're going to put in a Lightning Bolt. We might come back to this, but for now, we're just going to move to the next page. Okay, and now we have Flame Tongue Totem, which is very obvious. It's something you'd want to have in the deck. And even though this is a Murloc-based build for now, I am going to put in a Warline Zeppelmatic. And for the heck of it, because I just recently opened up one, I'm going to put in a Vitality Totem. And because I believe every duck should have a bit of Aspect of Taunt, I'm going to throw in a Pharaoh Spear as well. Throw in a couple of Hexes and a Lightning Storm. And a wind speaker. Okay, now let's move on to some actual warlocks. We have Silifin Spearwalker, which is a four mana cost, two five. When another, whenever another friendly murloc dies, draw a card. Overload one. Now we are going to move on. That is all the shaman cards that I have. We're going to move on to the neutrals. We have a Grim Skill Oracle. Put in two of those. We also have a Murloc Raider. Put in two of those. That's all for this page. Blue Gill Warrior. Two of those. Sorry that I'm not naming off the cost and the stats of every single card. I will actually do that. I'm still relatively new to concept of ASMR, where I believe that most people do it with mostly listening, but some people might watch as well. Okay. And so we did the Plugin Warrior, and that's all the uh, Murlocs for this page. Now we have a Murloc Tide Hunter, which is a 2 mana 2 1 Battle Cry Summon a 1 1 Murloc Scout. Put in two of those, of course. 
two puddle stompers, which is a two mana three two. Now, I obviously feel like whatever I'm going for with the theme probably isn't being met with the rest of the meta, which obviously probably has something else to synergize specifically with Murlocs that I'm missing. But we can try it out just to kind of see where it goes. Looking through the pages, it doesn't really look like I have a whole lot of other Murlocs at this time. Nothing on page 13. Moving to page 14. Oh my, maybe this Murloc deck idea wasn't the smartest thing in the world. To be fair, when I'm not net decking and I'm going for a very specific theme, it's kind of hard to tell what you really want to do. Especially if you just want to go gung ho with the theme of having Murlocs for the sake of having Murlocs, which is kind of what I was doing. But I honestly think that this time, Maybe I shouldn't. So in fact, we're actually going to take out... You know, we're not going to take out any Murlocs. We're just going to add to what we have. Add some more spells. So, in the meantime, what we're going to do, because I at least want to try this out once, I'm going to put in two Bloodlusts. And we're also going to put in another Windspeaker to give Wind Fury. And the blood plot, the blood lust is a five mana cost. Give your minions plus three attack this turn. Okay, so we have three more cards that we are able to put in the deck. We are out of Murlocs at this time. So what we, in fact, are going to do is put in an Annoyatron and two Gibbon Stalkers. The Annoyatron is a 2 mana 1 2 with Taunt and Divine Shield. One of my favorite cards from Goblins vs. Gnomes. And then the Gibbon Stalker is a 2 mana 2 3. I believe. Yes. Sorry, that was the deck limit 2 was actually covering the vitality of the creature. And he has stealth. So we are going to try that out. I'm not going to name the deck because, quite frankly, I don't really expect it to go anywhere. So let's try it out for one of the quests. So, pretty much what we have here is just kind of a Murloc deck for the sake of having Murlocs. And, quite frankly, I don't know if this is really going to do anything. But we can always try. We are actually going to be facing a mage today, which I personally admit is not one of my favorite matchups, pretty much at all. Especially with low cost creatures, with low health, because they're easily pinged by the mage ability. We start off with a bluegill warrior, forked lightning, and feral spirit. And I think I am going to keep this hand as an early hand. Opponent's still choosing her cards. I wonder what kind of shaman th she thinks she's facing up against. And the first thing we draw is a Grimscale Oracle, which all other Murlocs have plus one attack. And next turn we'll be able to play into Blue Gear Warrior, so hopefully Grimscale Oracle will be able to live next turn. I'm going to play him out, and that's going to end my turn. I doubt she's going to have any one-cost spells or anything to take out the Murloc. So we might gain a slight early game advantage, which would be kind of nice. Ooh, she plays the coin. I wonder if she's going to hero build if she is. She is afraid of my 1-1 one, one Murloc. Can't blame her too much, though. However, that does give me access to play Bluegill Warrior. Get a nice two health shave right off the top. Not exactly the biggest play, but I'll take small victories where I can take them. However, she's going to hero power again. Clearing my field, she has a card advantage of 
6 to my 4. I don't exactly have a whole lot, but we are going to have to throw down something. Hmm. I think this turn we play the Feral Spirits. I know it feels a lot. It feels pretty early to be playing something like this, but I'm actually going to be dropping my Flame Tongue Totem, which I drew uh, next turn. And the other card I also drew was Lightning Bolt. He's going to drop down the Harvest Golem. Okay, so I have an option. I can either summon my Murloc Tidecaller to gain additional minions on the field, which I think I will do. And then next turn I'll play the Flame Tongue Totem. And for now I am just going to go straight for the Gusto. I have a creature advantage right now of 4 to 1, but she, the uh, Jaina, who is Mr. DZ, has a card advantage of 7 to my 3. He drops down a Dark Iron Dwarf, boosting up his uh, the Harvest Golem. Ah, and I draw a Bloodlust, which we will save for a later time. I'm going to place down the Flame Tongue Totem. I placed in between the Spirit Wolf and the Murloc Tide Hunter. Tide Hunter up to 4 attack, who is going to take out the Dark Iron Dwarf. My Murloc has died, but then it instantly gives my Murloc Scout plus 3. Which I am going to save and just use the Spirit Wolf to take out that. Which might have been a foolish idea. In fact, now that I look at it, it is a very foolish idea, because he can easily destroy my 4-1 with Taunt. And I could have kept that alive on the field, but at the cost of my Tidehunter, or Scout. So I guess either way, I'd be trading something. My only two attacking minions right now have 1 HP, so he can ping one of them and attack it with his damaged Golem, which is at 2-1. And currently, the only other things I have on the field are my Flame Tongue Totem and my Wrath of Air, which gives plus one spell damage. Which I am holding a Lightning Bolt and a Forked Lightning, so that may come into play if he plays out another minion. Right now, he plays the Iron Beak Owl to silence my Flame Tongue Totem, which is obviously to be expected at this point. What I'm thinking of doing is sending up the Forked Lightning. Ah, he plays Mirror Image. Forked Lightning is definitely going to be the thing of choice at the moment. It has taken away one of the Mirror Images and the Iron Beak Owl. Fortunately, my Murloc Scout is down to 1-1, one, one, so it will not be able to completely kill the other mirror image unless I drop down my Lightning Bolt, which I kind of want to save for another time. Not to mention I don't want to have another Overload. But at the same time, if I drop down my Whirling's Epimatic, you know what, we are actually going to do that. I do want to have the field advantage, so at the cost of overload and spending another one of my spells, not to mention next turn, I can play Bloodlust and actually gain quite a bit of damage on the play. I know Bloodlust has been rather undervalued as of late, but I believe in a Wind Fury heavy deck it might be a good idea. Obviously this isn't a Wind Fury heavy deck because all I really have is the Whirling's Epimatic. And I do believe I also have the 
Windcaller, or whatever it was that gives friendly minions Wind Fury, which was going to be based around the Murloc theme. Right now he's taking his time. So as a bit of a synopsis, he has a heavy card advantage of 6 to my 1. I have a health advantage of 30 to 21, and a minion advantage of 3 to 1. And he just laid down a water elemental, which I will use my totems to clear with bloodlust. He is going to ping my whirling's epimatic, it looks like. But I don't think he's going to be able to eliminate it this turn. He is heavily debating it, and he's running out of time. I will be sitting on three overloads for next turn, so it does not look like I'm going to actually be able to use my bloodlust. I did not take that into play. Hmm. So instead, I will have to drop down a totem. Luckily for me, it is the Taunt Totem, and I'm also going to drop down my Murloc Raider. And I am simply going to attack Jaina twice for 6 damage. He really wishes he pinged my Whirling's Epimatic now, because he could have pinged it again this turn. But I guess he had to drop down the Water Elemental, and that might have cost too much. How much does that thing cost? 4? He had enough. I don't know why he didn't do it. But hopefully next turn we'll be able to play Bloodlust, even if, well, the only thing that would be a threat at this point actually would be a Flame Strike. So I really pray he doesn't have one of those. No, nope, but he does have a Polymorph. It's not terribly bad though. I have enough totems on the field to the point where, well, he just eliminated one and he's about to get rid of my one with Taunt. I have three minions who could take advantage of Bloodlust. Plus three on all of them. Mm -hmm. Throw down another totem. Do three to four damage with light. I do a lightning storm, which I think I'm mm, not sure if I want to use it now or not. Because he's just going to keep attacking me. Unfortunately, it's a lot of damage to get rid of. However, he doesn't see a huge threat either. I think I'm going to hedge my bets for now. Try to get a bit of a card advantage back. Okay, so he's playing an unstable portal, which add a random, random minion to his hand, at the, and it costs three less. That minion doesn't necessarily have to be in the deck either. Alright, so just to catch everyone back up, if you're just listening along, I'm sitting at 29 health, 2 is 14, he has a 6 to my 2 card advantage. I have 4 minions on the field to his 1, but 3 of them are totems and one of them is a sheep, of which he just pinged, so it is no longer there. And he just attacked my totem with his water elemental, and he just summoned a Sinjin Shieldmaster. I have drawn a second bloodlust. Okay, so it looks like I am not going to be drawing cards for a very long time. I do want to take advantage of the fact that I have my Wrath of Air Totem to do that extra damage. So I am going to drop down the Lightning Storm. However, that's only going to damage his minions. I don't have a way to keep him from attacking me directly. I am going to hold off the Bloodlusts, mostly because I can't play the other one. I do want at least one more minion on the field. Mm, here comes the Flame Strike. However, he is a fool to think he has me, because he Flame Strike nothing but Totems, which means I am free to draw many minions now. Summon another Totem, of course. It's the Taunt Totem, not quite the one I was looking for. And I am going to leave it at that and end my turn. Pretty much it's going to turn into a very late game sort of victory, if any, for me. 
Ah, uh, there it is. He drops down the Bulgarfus Ogre. He's starting to get quite the feel like that out on me. Okay, unless I have an answer for him soon, I will be completely lost. Unfortunately, I'm not really drawing anything at this time. All I have in my hand are two Bloodlusts, a Earthshock, and a Grimscale Oracle. I drew down a Searing Totem. He has his Boulderfist Ogre, his Water Elemental, Sentient Shield Master, and Raging Warden. He is going to fireball his Raging Organ to give it the damage buff. And that's actually going to be game for me. I was too greedy, and he took advantage of it. And simply speaking, he bested me. Good game to the mage. And we're going to call that a video. I do apologize if my voice wasn't entirely soft for the duration of the video. Sometimes I do forget exactly the type of video that I am going for. But I am going to try to prove that with time, of course. Thank you all for watching today. I hope that you, well, I hope that you didn't make it to the end of this because you should be falling asleep. But if not, hey, there's always next time, right? If you do like the video, go ahead and drop a like. And if you feel like subscribing for more, I will be doing, I'll be trying to do at least two of these every day with the quest. And as always, I am going to be doing the version with the voice and the game volume. And I'm also going to be doing the version with just my voice. So it's kind of a whatever you prefer. Uh, if you have any requests on what you want me to play, I'm open to anything. As you can see, my rank isn't exactly the greatest. I'm only rank 19 at the moment, and I honestly don't really plan for it to get much better than that. However, some of my favorite things to play are Shaman. I've done much better with my Shaman deck that a friend helped me with in the past, and I was going for a bit of a random theme with more or less very random and not very well constructed cards today. And also, I wasn't really top decking as much as I would have liked. But anyway, I digress, and I will talk to you later.